Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Mike Quickly of Illinois, co-chair of the Congress Congressional Ukraine Caucus. Um, Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, you were in Ukraine just a few weeks ago. I know you've been a strong advocate. Um, what's your reaction to the U.S. though on their landmine policy? Because there's been a lot of criticism of the U.S. for being very one of the only you know, major countries not to sign the landmine treaty. Sure. Uh, look, I mean, uh, these are decisions the Biden administration has made throughout this war. Uh, and as you as you've said, I've been to Ukraine four times since. The uh, Thousand Day War commenced. Uh, you've got to battle Putin, uh, who's a horri horrific war criminal, uh, at the very end. Uh, Ukraine faces a four to one manpower shortage, uh, so we have to balance the interest here. It's a difficult choice, I, I recognize, but uh, th uh, this is an autonomous country uh, facing extinction from one of the largest armies in the world. So you have to make these tough choices. And what I, uh, so now there's a lot of speculation that this is to increase the bargaining clout of President Zelensky under President-elect Trump. When he becomes president, there will be, as he has said, you know, he could settle it in 24 hours. So there's going to be pressure to negotiate, which could mean concessions to Vladimir Putin. Look, uh, let's, let's remember, uh, Putin's talking about saber rattling again, nuclear saber rattling, which you take very seriously. But he's had these red lines before. He didn't want us to have any long-range missiles there, which are there now, and tanks and F-16s and so forth. But, uh, you know, in the end, we have NATO and the U.S. and Ukraine have to have our red lines, too, and the war crimes that have taken place and just how to stop them. I have grave concern about what the Trump administration will do here because, at the very least, we have to have another supplemental sometime early in the next year uh, to keep this battle continuing. This is the biggest war and most important war of our lifetime. It is why we fought the Second World War and formed the, the liberal democratic world order after that. So again, these are brutally tough choices, but the sacrifice on the other side, our red lines are important as well. I want to ask you about Tulsi Gabbard because you served on the Intelligence Committee and she has no intelligence experience. She's also said very provocative things. She. Uh, praised Vladimir Putin at times. She has said that the war was justified, the invasion of Ukraine was justified because Ukraine was talking about joining NATO, which of course had not been approved and was years off and is their right as an independent country. So a lot, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of praise for her in Russia, on Russian state media in the last couple of days for being chosen to head 18 intelligence agencies. She would Edit, do the final edit on the presidential daily brief and also choose the briefer, among other things. Uh, so, look, a, a grave concern here as well. This is uh, ODNI was created post 9 11 to make sure that all our intelligence community shares information to avoid another 9 11. So, uh, the fact that she has zero experience didn't serve on the Intel Committee, doesn't have any government experience in this vein at all. I'm not sure she understands the role of ODNI or how to go forward with that. So that sharing of information is less likely to take place within our own community. But let's look at the rest of the world. You mentioned concerns about Russia. She privately met with Syria's President Assad. Uh, I think there's going to be great concerns among our allies sharing information with our intel community because she's at the head of it. Why would they trust her not to share with people that she praises, like Putin, like Assad, who are friends with, you know, our adversaries in North Korea and China so uh, and Iran? So, yes, I think she poses a national security risk at the head of the intelligence community, the ODNI. So uh, I, I hear concerns about the other picks so far under the Trump administration, but from my experience, she's the one that poses the greatest risk to our country. You also did sign, among other Democrats, House Democrats, asking the House Ethics Committee to release that Gates report. What happens if it isn't released? Uh, it's. It's just mind-blowing. The fact is, this is going to be our head of the law enforcement community with the allegations against him. 
uh, I hope the members of the committee have greater loyalty to the American people and our country than blind sycophantic loyalty to the President of the United States. These are spots that run critical aspects of our government that play a critical role in the lives of the American people. At the very least, the transparency is to know who these people are. The, the president-elect can pick who he wants, but the Senate can't abdicate its responsibility, not just to itself and the Constitution, but the American people to know who are running their government and everything about them. Congressman Mike Quigley, thank you, sir.